Later in the Casey. Bob Bellin. Here. Tom Touchette. Here. Matt Grimmer. Here. Roger Yolo. Here. Martin Galoon. Here. Jeff Rumler. Here. Magalie Miller. Here. Anthony Arbusius. Here. Al Tice. Gene Marinick. Here. Steve Getz. Here. Mark Moore. Here. Jerry Arlowski. Here. Jim Morris. Here. Okay, then if we could have uh, the fire commission by Mary. Tom Marco. 
Marshall was on Zoom. Yeah. Tom Marshall, can you cue in so you're here? He's on Zoom. Well, anyway. Gloria Matzik? Here. Brad Stocks? Here. Mary Altshuffle? Here. John Schrader? Here. Heidi Peterson? Here. Anthony Scrimmel? Here. Mike Dowd? Here. Fred Loomis? Here. Gary Fleischer? Here. Dennis Evanrude, Debbie White, Mike Burrell, and Steve Seibel are excused. Okay, and then if we could have the village of Shaniqua. Joanne Yavicentio here. Rich Grafe here. Rob Allen here. EJ Hubert here. Dan Numer here. Village of Neshota. Neil Gustafson here. Clint Johnson here. Mark Moore here. David Evenstead here. City of Delafield. Danielle oh, here. here. Oh. 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 Sorry. You can have your clerk right call the roll. All the person Henry? Here. All the person Schaefer? Here. All the person Valdi? Here. All the person Wilkin? Here. All the person Grimmer? Here. All the person Price? Here. All the person Iker? Here. Mayor Atwell? Present. Administrator Hafner? Here. Attorney Sawyer Gutenkunst? Present. Village of Catamount Lake. Mike Fickler? Here. Derek Taylor? Here. Dave Zimmerman? Here. Paul Fisher? Here. We also have two of our fire board members with us, Martin Galoon and Jeff Rumble. Town of Delafield. That's Supervisor Miller. Here. Supervisor Wolfley. Here. Supervisor Michaels. Here. Jeremy Cranick. Present. Supervisor Mahoney Ogden uh, said she'd be here, but she's not here yet. Village of Wales. Gene Mernick here. John Reinbold. And the town of Genesee. Buck Houston. Charlie Ross. And absent is Rick Braun and Sharon Lear, our town chairman. I did not believe he's here. But you're also here as a town of Genesee. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Your board member. Yeah. Yeah. And I, Jim Morris, I'm a board member also. Okay. Uh, any public comments at this time? Yeah, I'd like to see. Please state your name. Yep. It's kind of hard to see everybody. I'm Martin Morris. I'm sorry. Martin Morris, uh, captain with Lake Country Fire Rescue. I'm also the representative uh, of local 5241. I've been a Lake Country resident my entire life, uh, born and or raised in Lake Country in the town of Delafield. I graduated Arrowhead High School, pursuing the fire career in my junior year, which was through City of Delafield Fire Department. I started, or as I started going through with the POC uh, as a part time, became a full time firefighter paramedic in 2006. And then in 2007, I was promoted to captain. I'm also currently a rescue diver, uh, also added as a Thames operator for the SWAT team, it's a skit. I'm here to express concern on behalf of the Lake Country Fire Rescue uh, local. Regarding the referendum that was passed by strong voter support in the city and town of Delafield, it is from my understanding prior to the referendum, there was change to the language by one of the seven communities. This was last minute change, which differs from what all the communities voted on. This is, is this true? This change will cause a hardship on the department as well as the community with future staffing plan. This will leave stations short staffed and potentially browned out. The members of Lake Country Fire Rescue and Local 5241 are very concerned with these changes. It paints a picture that our fire board and communities are a split team which is not the best interest for LCFR nor the community. We have seen uh, and heard YouTube channels of council meetings that has made comments regarding a potential for no increase in staffing, possibly laying off. These sound bites 
have a significant impact on our morale. They also create issues with future candidates for being hired, which we're already seeing that. People look at this as a situation where we are having uh, staffing problems and we are lacking in leadership. This behavior sends a message that the organization is not stable. Chief Fennec has worked tirelessly to make adjustments to the budget and has had and addressed all staffing concerns. He is continually getting pushback from the board to make those adjustments, which he has. LCFR and the local 5241 show up every day, 24-7, 365, in a professional manner to serve the communities, putting our best foot forward, regardless of the negative tone that we hear and see. I ask you as a governing board to the same, because in the past months it appears as if the divide and the lack of professional leadership. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Todd Stucker, City of Delafield, 2312 Oak Road. Many of you I've spoken in front of before. Uh, thank you for the time tonight to be able to speak in front of you. Uh, it's disturbing. It's disturbing to find out that we passed a referendum. We passed a referendum by over, over amount of, of public, public opinion that said we need to support our fire departments. We need to support our fire and rescue. Would you okay? please go back and stand behind there. Okay. Uh, why? Because public safety costs money. And when public safety costs money, we are communities that can afford to support public public safety. We have all these people in this room because it, it means the, the, the dearest to all of them. To come to find out we have dirty politics and backdoor of bargaining going on is BS, okay? We can't stand for this. As city of Delta residents, we need to stand up, okay? We need to support what we agree to. When I was raised, my word is my word, and it better happen. Guess what? From what I'm from here, it's not happening. I'll tell you what, if it doesn't happen, one of you guys I will be running against. Not sure if it's a mayor or all of them, but we'll find out. This stuff, this stuff can't go on. Let's make it happen. Thank you. Any other public comments? Okay, at this time, I will turn it over to the chief. We have to uh, a ceremony of swearing in a new full-time firefighter paramedic. Yes, my distinct pleasure. Vinny, come on up. Um, so it's my distinct pleasure this evening to swear in Vincent Martellini as the, the next full-time uh, member of Lake Country Fire Rescue. I'll wait for him to come on up. He's not uh, walking around the maze. Um, so first of all, I'd, I'd really like to thank uh, some very important people to Vinny uh, that are here with him tonight. His mom, Eileen, his dad, Frank, his stepmom, Jennifer, his boyfriend, Zach, and his cousin, Sean. Um, thank you to your family for supporting Vinny and uh, supporting him when he's away from home for long sense of time so he can proudly serve, as these, serve these communities. Thank you for supporting him through all of his education. Vinny started with Lake Country Fire Rescue when he was a freshman in this building. He met Lake Country Fire Rescue and Chief Renan at a, a workshop that Tanya was doing. And that's all part of our program and the ecosystem at Lake Country Fire Rescue that captures young uh, students at Cattle Marine High School and teaches them about the trade of firefighting and how amazing of a career this is and how rewarding it is to help people day in, day out. And the family that they have behind them with their brothers and sisters um, that, that come into work every day, put air packs on and run into burning buildings as other people are running out. Um, so, you know, it's a distinct pleasure to be able to swear Vinny in tonight uh, as the next member. So to your to your family, Vinny, thank you for supporting me. Okay, Vinny? Uh, also, I should also note that uh, through his schooling, um, Vinny uh, has obtained his Fire One cert, his motor pump operator cert, his paramedic cert, and his instructor. Again, he came through the uh, program. He went through the EMT program his senior year of high school. He had a stint where he wanted to go be a nurse at Carroll. We won't hold that against him, but uh, he had worked at LCFR and, and really met the family and, and fell in love with the profession. Uh, we were able to convince him to go to paramedic and film all the wonderful things that, that are in store for him. So after doing this 25 years, Vinny, I can tell you, you have great things to see ahead. So um, if you would, please raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Vincent Artellini. I, Vincent Artellini. 
having been appointed to the position of firefighter paramedic inspector, having been appointed to the position of firefighter paramedic inspector, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States, the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin, the Constitution of the state of Wisconsin, will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability, and will faithfully and impartially discharge the duties of said office to the best of my ability. Congratulations. Thank you. Ceremonious with any swearing in ceremony, um, the, the the firefighter paramedic is to choose uh, who can come officially pin their badge on him. And Vinny has uh, chosen his boyfriend, Zach, to come on up and take care of that. So, Zach, come on up. Congratulations. Thanks, sir. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next thing I have listed here is instructions, and I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do. Introductions. Oh, introduction. <laughs> I thought it said. Uh, I think we're going to go with the, the fire board members all have signs in here. Uh, and most of the rest of the crowd is, is you know, firemen. So uh, I think we'll just bypass that uh, rather than just go around the room and say our name again. Everybody can pretty much see who's who. Uh, right, Jim, excuse me. Yes. Uh, the city of Delfield is planning on going into closed session right now. And we would like to uh, exit the room, have our closed session meeting, uh, item 10 on your agenda as well as ours and then come back and meet with the rest of the group. Uh, you don't want to wait until we at least discuss some of the things that no, are- No, we'd like to go into closed session now and we'll be back. Won't be too long. Uh, if that's the case, uh, you have a quorum and you you can then, that's, that's your prerogative. You have to take that vote and go on your own. Yeah. We will put this meeting into a recess until you return. Great, I appreciate the cooperation. I'll make a motion to go in close. Are you in the Yeah, I can. There's a band room off to the left back there. Okay, yes, thank you. Thank you. Older person, Henry. Older person, Schaefer. Older person, Valdi. Other person Wilkin. Other person Grimmer. Other person Price. Other person Iker. Sure, we can find. So for the rest of us, we will just wait until they return. This meeting will be at it. A reset to go Uh, City of Delfield, I see that Tom is still out. I think he had to go to the restroom. He should be back here any second. Okay. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, so Tom is back in the room. We will reconvene. Uh, City, you need the boat to come out of both sides of you. Did. Already took care of. Thank you. Okay, we're going to start, uh, continue on here. And what I want to do is uh, have discussion on items seven, eight, and nine. And we'll go through and just do discussion first. Uh, and then we'll come back and see if anyone wants a cold session after the discussion or if anyone wants to take action on them because each of you, you know, are in a separate meeting. So therefore you can you can act or you cannot act on it. Uh, the fire board will has no say in this anymore. You're you're voting on the, the chief's budget and you're voting on an amendment to the IME, which the fire board does not have a vote in. Uh, at this time, the first item for discussion would be an amendment to the IMA by each of the municipalities. And I'll quickly cut to the chase. You all have a packet and in there is the, uh, the first amendment to the intermunicipal agreement. The first page is pretty much boilerplate. The parts of the, the meat of the item is the exception for 2024. The municipalities agree for the calendar year 2024, the aforementioned restriction shall not apply. The sole purpose of this amendment is to increase the total budget amount for the year of 2024 above the previous restrictions. In 2025 and each year thereafter, any increases from the prior year shall be subject to the consumer price index plus 2% cap noted above, unless further amended pursuant to Article X of the agreement. And I would ask that in this discussion that there be one principle from each municipality that speaks so that we can expedite this and not have everyone just talking. I think everyone should be appraised. You're sitting all together. So, discussion. Anyone have anything for discussion on this item? Catamalock Lake is ready to vote. Okay. MC has no objection to the IMA uh, amendment. Okay. Village of Wales has already voted in favor of the changes unanimously. <clears throat> Village of Shaniqua has no objection to the CBI 2%. No objections from the town of Dallas field on the exception for 24 for the CPI plus 2 percent exception. Uh, Village of Neshota has no, no objection. I, however, I would like to raise the, the issue as, as of the fact that um, for the next uh, budgets in the future uh, that we're looking at 2025 and 2026, we're looking at significant increases as well. Um, are we going to be doing? Are we going to be doing this dog and pony show again um, for these next years? Because um, you know, I don't see how the chief is going to be able to do that. So while we agree with this, I think that uh, it it is something we need to take into consideration right now as to how it's going to be handled in the future. Okay, uh, that is not you know part of the the action item out <laughs> here but Understood. i do hear what you're saying and uh i would uh as president of the board i would implore the communities to get together and come to an agreement and i don't care what road they take but this cannot go on so <clears throat> that's my point on that any other discussion on this item okay at this point, the chief will city give a brief. City of Delfield has not spoken, I don't believe. Yeah. Pardon? The city of Delfield hasn't spoken. Okay. I asked if there was any discussion. Do you, do you have any? Okay. Yes, I do. I okay. figured you were in a call since we were last. No, I wasn't. I wasn't calling. The city of Delfield uh, objects to voting in favor of that and would vote no. Okay. 
So that covers everybody then? Okay, at this point then, uh, without, and that's how you intend to vote on it? Yes. Mr. Chairman, as a point of order, I would like the opportunity for our village to vote and be on the record. Okay. I think other municipalities that haven't voted yet should also be on the record. So I would, I would ask, uh, uh, first, uh, we're looking at uh, item number seven, which is uh, an possible action on the amendment of the IMA by each of the municipalities. The copy was in your uh, in your packets. Uh, I believe that this is the same thing, or a very similar document that we already passed in the village. So I would ask uh, for a motion and a second on uh, consideration of this. Uh, I'll move. I'll second that. Okay. Move and second it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, Mr. Chairman. That. Would any other municipality that hasn't already approved this like to vote on it at this point? Mr. Chairman, uh, Town of Genesee, uh, we have it on our agenda for Monday, but um, my board members would like to vote for it at this time. So um, I would ask for a motion. We do have a quorum. I would ask for a motion to approve the amendment to the IMA. So the motion will be made and seconded. Any discussion? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried unanimously. Okay. Does that that come? Neshota has already approved the, the, okay. the amendment. Janiqua is in favor of it. You, have you voted yet on it? You have not voted. You're just voiced to be in favor of it, right? Oh, um, we approved it as a board uh, about two months ago. Oh. If you'd like, we can do it again here. Well, I think, Jody, this, Jody, this is a little bit different. Yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. That's fine. Um, <laughs> All those in favor. Okay. I have Rich making the motion and EJ at the second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Based on that, we can we can do this again too. Um so do I have a motion to uh mm -hmm. Um, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Yes. Okay. Well, that makes uh, six communities that have voted for it. Town of Delphi would like to take action on the IMA too. And just to clarify, all this IMA amendment is doing is providing for a vehicle to uh, exceed the CPI plus two provision for 2024. And really that's so that we can retain the seven hires that we did this year um, so that we can exceed the, the budget. I, I, I would ask for the forum of the Town of Delafield Board to, to make a motion. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I would motion um, for the board to approve the First Amendment to the Lake Country Fire and Rescue Intermissible Agreements presented to the board this evening. Second. Motion is second to approve the IMA as presented. All those in favor say aye. 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 Passing unanimously to Tom Delfield. Okay. Then the next thing we will we will have a discussion and a little short recap from that is on the capital budget. Chairman, uh, Jerry Fletcher has raised his hand. What's that? Jerry Fletcher has raised his hand. He's on Zoom. He, oh, he's on yeah. Okay, Jerry. Um, my yeah, I don't know if you can hear me, hopefully. Uh, my question is, um, are we able to ask the city of Delafield why they have voted nay? Well, I, I certainly think you can. 
want to give an explanation as long as we're all here. Yeah, we're, we're voting no, and we're anticipating having discussion as we move further through the agenda as to the reasons why. Okay. Is that, that's your answer, Jerry? But they didn't vote. But who, 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 was, who was part of the original formula calculations um, out of all of the seven communities? Uh, to my knowledge, it was, it was well, it would have been, uh, yeah, Chief, if you would. Sure, Jerry, to answer your question, the formula that IMA 7 is using was derived by Tom Hafter, myself, and Dan Neumer from the Village of Shaniqua in a number of working meetings. Okay. The other six communities really are, are the other, the new four um, simply asked for a proposal and that this is what we gave them. And did we have a consensus or an agreement or um, how, how did we get to this point that we're at? That's a great question. Well, my understanding after the, uh, the, the referenda was this was a a win win for every, every single community, and to come back and um, have to reiterate this, um, it, it seems like a total waste of time um, and a total waste of um, our fire services. I would like to thank Jerry for asking the question. I actually would appreciate an answer as well. Anything to say? Well, let's give a little bit. Um, and I'm grateful for, for um, the chief and everybody putting this together. I think it's important to recognize um, where the city came from. When we um, first began discussions on moving from IMA 3 to IMA 7, adding new members, there were certain advantages for the city. Some of those advantages were um, uh, assistance on the capital day. Um, increased response time by adding the town of Delafield Station. Um, practically speaking, we did not save a whole lot on our operational budget. In order to uh, bring new members in, those new members came in at from our perspective, relatively reasonable rates from what they were paying currently. And by doing so, like I said, we gained, and for us, the city of Delaware, the thought was we gain on capital, we improve our response time um, on uh, the east side of Lake Mag, and we pay roughly the same in terms of operation, operations. And this is all pre-COVID. This is all pre-staffing um, prices. We were all made aware that paid on call was a problem, but it was never the problem um, to the extent that it was that the pandemic caused. So now the city is facing um, a year and a half later, after we signed IMA 7, we are faced with a crisis in staffing that has been um, made worse by the pandemic. And instead of facing X budget and X operation costs, now we're faced with almost three times that. And so the agreement that we made um, in, to initially bring on additional members is now, because of the staffing plan, is a um, obviously a significant, significant increase to the city of Delaware. And that's kind of, uh, at least that's my perspective on where the city, where we came from and how we got here. And so given the current circumstances, that's where the city is looking um, to 
to look at the IMA, look at the funding formula to get more, um, in our perspective, and I know that's probably not yours, but to get more fairness out of those operations. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll add that, so going back to 2010, I was relatively new council member, and when the Lake Country Fire and Rescue was being assembled, um, I know Mr. Bellin was, was a key part of that, and I did my best to, to be a fly on the wall in a couple of the uh, um, iterations of the multiple spreadsheets over months that um, they tinkered with formulas to make win-wins for, for every member. And it wasn't a uh, a formula that was, hey, this is this is um, going to work forever, um, but this appealed to the three members at the time of, of the uh, founding of LCFR. And it was a lot of contemplation and, and coordination and discussion about how to um, carefully craft that formula so that everyone felt and were paying proportionate to what their demographics were, their economic situation was, their, their geography, their utilization, um, all of those things. And that, and that seemed to work very well for us for a long time. And then in 2020, when we went into negotiations with the new members, that formula was revisited under those same same types of ideals, in, in my understanding, and that was the consideration of the three different factors: um, the the fixed rate piece of the formula, which lowers the barrier of entry for new members um, by disproportionately assigning costs to the existing uh, uh, three three members um, by um, uh, the the variable portion, which is based on the demographic, you know, the, the population, the valuation of the land, as well as the utilization, um, and then the third part of the formula is the cap, which gave um, uh, a maximum amount that could be impacted um, by any one community from one year to the next. And um, during the 2020 negotiation, I can't believe that anybody in this room contemplated that the chief would be presenting us with a budget that would triple the um, the operational cost asked from over the course of just three or four years. Um, had that been on the table as a as a potential um, end game um, four, or just two years ago, um, it was not a win win. It should not have occurred. We need to revisit. When you're asking in this in this section seven, um, the way it's being received by me at least in the city, um, to change the formula in the IMA, you're looking at a very specific singular part of that formula and not taking into consideration the balance and the impact of the rest of it. And the, today's circumstances need to be taken into consideration, just like they were in 2020 and back in 2010, the last two times the IMA formula was was updated. Um, that's what some of our discussion was about and, you know, eliminating the cap to enable the two communities that passed referendums to contribute that $800,000 plus for the $1.7 million ask of the increase that uh, Chief Fennig is asking for um, is palatable given the ability to, in cooperation, to, for us to collaborate and, and look at the entire formula, not just one piece of it. But as a whole, everything in city government has gone up from payroll to health care to retirement to everything else. So I don't think that this is something that's new to municipalities, especially after or pre-COVID and then after COVID. So I, I, I really don't see why there is such a big shock to if it is actually tripling of the budget or your portion of the budget, why that would surprise anybody. Well, there's everything has gone up, but everything hasn't tripled. Everybody's paying more though, city of Delafield. Are I mean, you we're, paying we're, we're three paying times up. as much we're as you up. did for a loaf of bread? Yeah, I mean, but, but just from the town of Delafield perspective, we started this thing in 2020. We were paying 651. You know, in, in 24, I mean, it, it, it's a 100% increase from where it is when we got into this thing. And I, I mean, everybody's paying, you know, just as much uh, as, you know, the increase. And, and the formula is the formula. And Mr. Hafner's blueprints are all over the formula that's in the IMA that everybody agreed to and signed 
And now, you know, we want to throw out the fixed portion of the formula and use the variable portion of the formula, which makes the city go down to 38% and everybody else has to pay more. That's not the deal we sign on to. And at the end of the day, we have a, a staffing crisis in our fire department. We have a really good thing with Lake Country Fire and Rescue. We had public comment before this meeting that I, I don't want to see long-term damage created with Lake Country Fire and Rescue. And we need to figure out a path forward. And we need to figure out a path forward for 24. And then we need to figure out a path forward for 25 and 26. Because we all got to figure yeah. out how to work together. I absolutely agree. We have to find a way forward to work together. You realize by not accepting the amendment to the IMA for next year that we would revert to last year's budget. That's the only authority we would have. Last year's, uh, is, am I correct on that, John? No. But she has the numbers. You could still approve CPAP was 2% increase, obviously. Yeah, that's correct. So, yes, yeah, CPI is <laughs> But we'd have to go back to the other budget because none of us would have the authority due to the fact that one of us didn't vote to amend this EIMA. So we would have to revert to the budget that was uh, 2023. How much money is that, Chief? Do you know? Um, John, actually, do you have them? I have to dig down into this computer right now that's running. Again. Well, you told me the maximum allowed under the agreement without an amendment was $3,480,975. That seems correct. <clears throat> well, not only would we not have as much to spend as we spent this year, we'd have to go backwards. That if if we did not approve this amendment, that's correct. Yes, and we're not so, suggesting that we we're suggesting um, a more uh, uh, revisiting the IMA, the funding for it, and getting to uh, an appropriate level of funding. Okay, well, but aren't we all? under the same funding formula? I mean, it applies equally to each community. Mm -hmm. Isn't that correct? Or is that not correct? Sure. Somebody's shaking her head back there. It do, well, it's, it doesn't, it doesn't. So if you want to- Well, what, a, it does it or doesn't it? I'm asking the simple question. Well, the impact and-, and I'm not talking and, impact. I'm talking about, is the formula apply equally to each community? So we all pay the same, you know, we have the same agreement as far now. Your population may increase, the number of runs may change. All those are factors taken into consideration, but the formula applies equally to each community. The numbers are gonna change, obviously. You, uh, in, the, in any referendum language. I'm not talking <laughs> referendum, I'm talking about- Can I please finish? Or when you're done speaking, nod and I'll talk. Okay, <laughs> go ahead. But I'm, I'm questioning what you're saying is referendum. We're not talking <laughs> referendum. We're talking about the funding formula that we get to to arrange for the money to spend to operate the department. And that's I'm not trying, a referendum fact. That's that's our agreement. Go ahead. I'm trying to provide context in the fact that when referendums are presented to the people that are paying the bills, it's very, very um, difficult to, sh to put down the impact of a, of a homeowner that owns a half a million dollar house at six. Okay, so if you're saying that this budget change has an equal impact on that uh, fixed income couple in the half million dollar house in the city of Delafield as it does in the town of Delafield, I will say it does not. The impact is significantly higher when you look at the formula as it exists. Once you remove the cap, the impact on that single homeowner who was likely could be on a fixed income. A hundred dollar impact to the town of Delafield resident could very well be a two hundred and ten dollar impact to the city of Delafield impact uh, resident, and that is where I say it, on a spreadsheet it looks fine. When you're asking people to write the checks, it's alarming, and we're looking for um, uh, taking both of those two things into consideration, tweaking one aspect of a three variable formula. And expecting equitable results when the numbers are changing so dramatically um, is, is not logical. Um, we're, we're, at, we're, we're looking to make an alteration to, to the formula in its entirety, not just one piece of it. Well, speaking on behalf of the town of Delafield, and as I came when I came to your meeting in, in July, 
Uh, so the town of Delafield cannot change the formula for 24. Uh, the town of Delafield, and when we went to referendum in April for the single levy for the 14 firefighters, did it based on the formula in the IMA that we agreed to in 2020. Um, and again, we're, are, are we talking about equity or equality? Are we talking about if I live in the town of Delafield or the city of Delafield, we shall pay the same amount of fire service, even though these the makeup of, of our communities are, are very, very different. I mean, the city's got a lot of commercial, it's got a lot of senior living, it's got, it's, it's got a totally different makeup than, than what the town does. And I, there's no way that we can talk about changing the formula tonight for 24. Well, that's what number seven does. So number seven, seven, all, all number eliminates seven, a piece of the formula. Right? All number seven does is remove the CPI plus two cap so that you can retain the seven firefighters, which you ask your residents to do in your referendum. And that passed by 70% of your, your community. So let's do and it. I, and I would also say that, and I wasn't in the room in 2020 when all of this was talked about, but what I do think I know is that the referendum that was passed would have exceeded 2%. Um, and now we're turning that down in the city of Delafield and putting all seven of our communities in jeopardy because we're, we're not approving CPI plus two. Is that correct? Because I wasn't here. Well, it's a fair question. What what two communities have done is ask taxpayers permission and got their authority to increase the levy by somewhere in the neighborhood of four hundred seventy thousand dollars in the town of Bellefield and somewhere in the neighborhood of four hundred fifty thousand dollars in the city of Bellefield. We are prepared to spend that extra money. But it doesn't, the formula doesn't work when you just change the cap. You have to figure out a way to leverage that $800,000 worth of spending capacity. That's half of the budget increase that he's, that the chief is looking for. That leaves another 800 plus ish for the other five communities to find and will be, will be whole. I mean, we'll, we'll pass the budget that he has on the table. In all due um, respect, you didn't answer the question. Well, you but. can't just change, you can't accomplish what I just said um, by just eliminating the cap. You need to you need to um, work with the formula like you did in 2010 and like you did in 2020. Changing the rules in the middle of the game when there's a when there's a change in, in ownership of this, right? Like we've we've gone and asked our taxpayers to increase what they're paying and they agreed to it so did you they agreed to it and now it's like okay well we're not going to actually make this change until we we also adjust this thing over here right like talking about change to the entire agreement is oh i'm sorry how you're getting well hold on. agenda like, item number seven alters it, the formula Okay. We are suggesting that that's a good start. We need to talk about altering the formula. Okay. So, but if you, in the meantime, then we need to agree on it and not hold six other communities hostage for it. And it's technically seven other jobs at risk for it. Right. So if we agree on this piece and then can come back to revisit and find out where we get to that, if there's going to be a change, right? Like, fine, we can talk about the change, but in the meantime, like what is supposed to happen with the budget? while we're figuring out what's going to change with the rest so of the you, you would be agreeable to a funding formula change? I didn't say it. I didn't say that. But what we are what we need to what we need to what we committed to our taxpayers, right, was an increase in spending to get this done. Right? In, why do you, why do you think this is a funding formula change? We're just changing the cap. The cap is a key part of the formula. The, the cap is a key part of the agreements. I would argue that we basically the city would have never entered into this agreement without the cap. Neither would have we. But we then, agreed then to change I, the cap then, last then, year oh, when we wow. spent all of the extra money we had. We didn't change the cap. We didn't change the cap, but we set the trajectory that the cap would have to be changed or seven firefighters would have to be laid off. So, so in my mind, what we're doing now is right-sizing the shift from the decision that we made last year, where we agreed to spend some excess money while still maintaining the terms of the IMA, 
But now we need to alter the IMA so that we can retain this fire pay. We agree 100% that you went into the referendum with the exact same intent. So, so can the we IMA to retain the seven fire Yeah, can we do that? That's the only, that's the intent. That's what we want to do. That's what seven says. Mm. Okay. But is seven going to continue year after year after year? Is yeah. this just a band aid that's going to take care of? 23 or 24, and then we're going to be talking about this again. That is the physics concern. I mean, I well, I think I think people need to understand. And if you've ever worked, and all respect to everybody on this call, if you've ever worked in a city organization, if you've ever worked in a fire department, a police department, it's not a revenue generating organization. It's a revenue draining organization. And as calls for service go up, the price of service is going to go up. And that's something that you can't, you, you can't do that on the cheap. You can't. And if you want to go back to the old days where we had paid on calls, and volunteers, all you're going to get out of that is excess response times. You're going to get lack of training. You're not going to get the professionalism that we currently have in our seven communities. It, it, it's a fact. You cannot argue that. And and if you want to argue that, then I would say move somewhere else. Um, but this, this is something that is critical to all seven of our communities. And it's something that I think everybody in their true of hearts says, yep, we need to pay for it. It's not going to ever become a profit center for anybody in these organizations. Jared, we understand the vast majority of what you're saying. I think we're, we're, what we need help from you is to understand that this is a dramatic change. It's not a typical change because of inflation and some oddities. This is a significant change. And we're here to work on an agreement to spend all the money that we've raised in the referendum and accomplish that goal. You know, to, to I would, and I'm sure everybody on this in this meeting would agree with that, but it, it, it almost sounds like we're arguing over pennies. We're stepping over dollars to pick up cents. Um, and, uh, you know, what is the deficit that we're talking about from the 22 budget to the 23 to the 24 budget? How, mu how many, what's the number? Jerry, can you ask that question again? I'm sorry. What are we talking about? Are we talking about 100,000? Are we talking about 200? Are we talking about half a million? What are we talking? In terms of what the city raised in their referendum and what the board approved plan is, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Um, just shy of $300,000. Okay. So $300,000. Sure. And, and, and that is share, is the 300,000. Is that what we're lacking from all seven communities, five of the communities, or is that just one community? Just the city. So what's the population in, in Delo Field right now? I can get that for you. 7144. Ooh, what's 300,000 divided by 7144? Yeah, the city did this math when they went to referendum. It figured it out. I, I, I don't know, guys. Is there any common ground we can do to pass the 24 budget? I mean, the IMA has a, a contractual end date. I, I believe it's from 2025 after five years. If you would like to discuss a funding formula change, I believe the appropriate time is when the agreement ends. And we can set a course to do so when the agreement ends. But changing it in the middle, the benefit of the city to the detriment of the town of Delta residents of it, is there any path where we can have a 2024 budget that keeps our type of fire? I'm, I'm open to ideas. I, I understand your position on it. I, I, understood keep, it for months. I keep saying that you're not. I, I think that that's budget. an excellent idea. Excellent idea. But by eliminating the, the cap is an essential part of the formula. Yeah. I don't understand. We're well, not trying to cap for one money. year to accept the increase that we put into place last year. We spent our reserves, we spent our extra capital money to get ourselves out of a crisis. And we did so uh, sort of skirting the 2% plus CPI because it was available funds between fire departments. 
So to maintain our progress and keep those people, we would need this exception in the cap mm -hmm. to right size where the budget's at. Mm -hmm. what in a, it, what, is the town of Delafield committed to spending the full amount of the referendum in the for past? Yes. And so is the city. By eliminating this, we can't. But the but city did the referendum deliberately for less than what was called for in the That's not a question I asked. I, I, I but you can't be disingenuous when you went to your voters and asked for the wrong amount of money based on the budget that the entire fire board put forward last year. Both both communities with the referendums went asked the taxpayers for money based on the anticipation that the formula would change. Oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, well, what, what is number seven? You're a little simple here and one at a time, please. Tim, to answer your question, the town is willing to spend the amount that formula allows them to, based on an agreed upon budget. If that budget is to use all 470, we will. If it's a lesser amount, we'll use our portion and use whatever amount of that referendum to back. And how can we do that without changing the formula? We'll be changing the cap as to how much the budget is still going to be. I don't know. I asked, is there a path? Do you guys see one? Is there a way we can get to a number and a structure that allows us to just move forward, keeping the seven firefighters from the steel? I think you follow the funding through 24 that gives uh, the city officials the opportunity. It gives everybody a year to, um, if, you, if you have to sell this to your constituents or your residents, whatever. Um, I, I think most people agree and most people would understand that the, the cost of fire service and police services is, is going up and it, it's a part of life. And I think to... Um, not give the chief what he needs to operate his budget and operate his department for the next year going forward in the next 18 months is, you know, that, that, that's not acceptable. I think the state of Wisconsin and the legislature did recognize the fact that there was a crisis. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe in our last meeting, uh, Mr. Hafter, did you say you were getting an additional four hundred thousand in state aid for first responders? No. What was it? What are you getting? In state share revenue? No, not in state share. The additional amount that the state earmarked for first responders. Each community is getting more than what they had originally anticipated. I'm not familiar that we get any money from the state specific to first responders. Like this year, this year revenue portion. Yeah, right. Okay, but they they increased it because of the shortfall that was necessary because of first responders. I believe the city got. Aaron, you're on the um, yeah, board for that. Yes. That you work with the legislature. Was, that was the idea um, that most legislators actually have is that they expected people would be using that money for fire and EMS, which had been a major um, talking point at the, at the state level. Anyways, if you're talking about the state shared revenue, I think it's about 180,000 additional that the city will be receiving um, above the gallon we received in the past. We'd like to take your number that you're willing to commit our number and then we'd like to work together to talk about changing all three of the variables in the formula to come up with a budget that we can approve for this year. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Rico, that's just a tough spot. I mean, we're not we're not going to agree to have the town and the Delafield residents pay more after they just passed a referendum. What you're willing to commit this year? What we're willing to commit this year? No formula change. And discuss a formula change. The 2025. I just interject. We had we had a referendum language that was specific to retaining seven and hiring seven. So if we use all of that, then we have to reduce that. Yeah. So, Mr. Mayor, saying that we would set our goal to rediscuss the funding formula at the end of the current IMA in 2025. Is that 
your statement? I'm saying that we would get, we're asking for a commitment from each of the other 60 communities to work with a third party group, independent group, to come up with a more equitable form, formula and work out an agreement to get us through this year. But we want your commitment to be willing to look at all three aspects of the formula, which includes the cap and the other two items. To Mr. Mayor, we look for equity oh, amongst all the communities. And I, I would, I think the village could consider what you're talking about. But one of the things I would want agreement from all the communities on is instead of having a five-year commitment with a two-year out, I want a one-year out. Okay, you're, you're going to modify the IMA. I want everybody to have the ability to get out in one year. You could do the same in Delaware Field and say, we're done. Mike, I appreciate the comment, and it's something we'd be willing to consider. But we have to have this type of conversation okay. to try to move forward. But we also have to move forward on 24. And we, You know as well as I do that if we hired a professional, brought them in, tried to get a meeting like this put together, and adjust the IMA, that's not going to happen by 2024. That's not going to happen by every municipality's budget time. We're, we're starting to plan by 2025. Pardon me? By 2025. That's correct. Yeah. I, but if you would agree to pay in 2024 what was budgeted last year for 2024, I think everyone here should agree to looking at the IMA with a professional, as you suggest. Okay. But I don't believe we get there in 2024 without the chief's 4554 budget okay and that requires an amendment to the IMA. if we if you continue you haven't taken your vote publicly yet and i understand that you've told us what you think the outcome of your vote's going to be on number seven which is the amendment to the ima the first amendment that we're talking about. if that doesn't pass tonight we go back to last year's budget because it's an impasse Everybody can talk about, I'm willing to pay more, I'm willing to pay more. Unless everybody agrees to the budget that we have to follow, we've got an agreement we got to follow. So we're going backwards. We got to, the chief's going to have to give out pink slips because City of Delafield won't even agree to adjust to keep the budget the same as it is this year. But Mike, I think he's, I think he's offering a pass. Path forward, right. Mr. Mayor. I, I think he's suggesting that he will get to the number. We haven't said what number yet. We'll get to the number that our citizens pass in the referendum. No, that, that, is, that, is, that, that, is that the retained number or the ad seven number? Tom can tell you the number. Yeah. Changes, so. I'm looking it's, to fund the page five, four, five, five, four. The thing that we talked about the last time some of us were in the room um, talking about all of all of this was that at 1.5 million which is what you have said it leaves it not funded completely and it fundamentally changes the formula we said i can only speak for neshota and i can't even speak for neshota without everybody else here sitting next to me but what i what i can tell you is that everyone kind of said we are willing to look at the formula moving forward. We are not willing to look at the formula today because we don't have time. Tom, is I think that uh, uh, I think that Mayor Atwell's um, proposal is fair. The only thing that I would say is that I would ask to have that extended through calendar year 25. Steve, that's your about in our meeting that we had at the town of Delafield Field uh, maybe two weeks ago, uh, that if we did have to take a look at opening up the IMA for various aspects that the city would like to see mended. Uh, that we would put a time frame on it of six months, we would have to make a decision. And we would start in earnest now, and we would have to have a decision by March mm -hmm. as to what was going to happen beyond 2024. I believe uh, we need to fund the chief's 
budget of $4,554,000 for 24. And then we also need that commitment that we all get together, we work with a professional, and we fund the fire department for the chief's budget for next year so that we're all not suffering the brownouts that we have now. We'll still perhaps have some brownouts, but it'll be significantly less. And that that's fair to every community, including the city of Delaware. We can't get this done before budget time this year, which is eight weeks away. It's just not gonna happen. We can't get a professional to come in that fast and talk to us and everything else. And then we need six months to get that done. So well, again, I stand by what I say, end of 25. Yeah, I, I think the town would agree, numbers aside, because I think we have a discussion there, but the town would agree, excuse me, Mr. Chairman, I think we would be in favor of looking for something, studying something to take effect for the end of 25. That's when the IMA initial turns up, and that's what I've been saying, that would be the appropriate time to look at it. So if that's what you're saying, then, then they would be willing to do that. Steve, I think the initial term is up after 2027. It's a five-year term, two-year out. Two-year out. Two out. So the initial term is five years, and then somebody can get out. Mm -hmm. no, I, I do believe it's five-year term that started on January 1st of 2021. I'm agreeing with the mayor. Why would you get in Russell? I, I think for all of the communities to move forward, especially for Chief Fennick to hire um, qualified, competent professionals, we can't have this looming uh, over our heads or over um, the fire department or the agencies that are involved in this. Because, um, you know, as you heard earlier from Captain Morris, you know, the, the, the social media posts are, are brutal. And it's hard enough to find qualified people, yet alone trying to find qualified people when you've got social media posting negative things about your agency. So I think the longer we can give Chief Fennec, uh the opportunity to build his organization, um, the better off it's going to be for every single one of the communities that are involved in this. Are there any other comments from the other municipalities as to our proposal? We'll agree to look at it. What number do you have in mind for 24 as far as the budget number? Operating budget, not operating. Yeah. <laughs> Are you looking at the photo figure on the page? The one that we've talked about in the room. The 1.5. So the approximately 1.59 um, million city contribution. Which is the total budget of how much? Adding everybody in. 3.38 million. 3.85. 3 3.86 million. Yeah. If that's a number that allows you to retain your current operations, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Correct. The, the question I've been asking on top of that, and I haven't gotten a clear answer, is in 2023, we budgeted for seven new hires to be hired January 1st at um, lateral transfer pay rates. Uh, my understanding is those hires took place um, over a series of months, some of them not happening until just recently, and that the majority of them were at um, the low end of the pay scale and not the um, lateral transfer rates that we had budgeted. And so my thought is that it seems like there's, and I don't know this for a fact, but it seems like there should be a few hundred thousand dollars of cost savings this year. Um, and um, couldn't those be used on top of the 3.86 million uh, to get us somewhere up into, I don't know, the 4.1 million type of range. And um, I would look to the chief for, Thoughts on what that number might be? If um, I don't know if you've got that quantified at all, or I, I mean, I don't, I don't want to take a swag in a meeting like this. Sorry. This is not a number we can start looking into until really twenty twenty four. No, this would be the twenty four. Twenty four budget. 
but you would speculate per Tom's rationale that such money could could exist. should exist. Is that what matter? I'm sorry, if I don't, are you looking at me and asking? I'm looking question? at you. Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'm, yes, I think that there is, the, I'm targeting a 4.1 area with what Tom just mentioned. I would just like to ask, what's the rationale for not following the plan that everyone agreed to? Well, my our recollection, Chief, is that you know we were given a presentation by you of what the plan would be, but we are at a loss to find any kind of record of us approving uh, the budget that you proposed. Uh, our understanding is that we have listened to the proposal and we gave feedback at the time but there's been no formal vote or approval by the city of Delafield on your plan. So I can say that three times the vote, the board has voted on the plan. Your two red constituents on the board have voted unanimously for the plan on November 10th. Everyone was presented with the costs that were associated with the plan. Matt and Roger voted yes for that plan, including the costs it is in the meeting minutes. So all the respect by on that vote, that vote was to push that proposal to the municipalities. It wasn't an endorsement of a four-year spending plan. We don't vote on four-year spending plans in the budget. And during that meeting, as everyone on the fire board knows, I I uh, attempted to um, enact some more um, conservative budget measures, including removal of the um, an HR, removal of a drone, removal of building furnishings, but there was no um, there was no agreement um, from the fire board. And given um, that current situation, yes, I voted to push that um, that proposal to the municipality. But it was not an it's not a vote. You don't vote on four year budgets. But I. I I, I, agree, I agree with Matt. I was in the room. I voted for it to push it to the municipalities. And Tom Delafield did not pass a referendum that met the terms of the four year projection. Um, our discussions about, around it were you know, quite extensive, and we just didn't think that projecting anything in the fire world at this time out four years was reasonable. Um, so our, our referendum does not cover a four year plan. Um, and, and I, I agree with the city on this. That, we have to take each budget on its own. We want to allocate resources um, to the best that we can. I think the fire board's recommendation to the municipalities is carries a lot of weight, but ultimately it's the municipality's job to tax our residents and raise those funds. And that's just a different responsibility than the fire board has. And so there's there's a distinction and a difference that I, I point out at every one of these meetings, and I'll, I'll continue to have to, that I, I, as a Supervisor, I, I can't treat the four-year fire board plan as gospel. We have to take it one step at a time. It, it appears the step before us today is a maximum of a $4.1 million budget that has some sort of agreement to work on a plan for the end of 25, where we may be able to change or alter the funding for it moving forward. If anybody sees it other than that, please speak up. But that seems to be the maximum of a common ground here. When you well, say 4.1, I'm sorry. Just a quick comment. When you say 4.1, you're assuming the addition of a couple hundred thousand dollars of cost savings. Correct. Sure. That was the number yep. changed. Yep. Okay. And one thing that I would say is, uh, Mr. Mayor, you asked if there were any comments based upon um, the offer of 1.5 million. The problem that that does for me is that that browns out um, your, your station a lot and when it does that it drastically affects the communities on the north side and so we'd have to talk about what that's paying for and so then let's just say we're like hey we need to open up the neshota fire station to service the communities on the north well then the town of delafield is what are they browned out it it, it starts to talk about all sorts of questions that we don't know the answers to yet. So if you wanted comment on offering 
1.5 million and not funding it completely. Um, so that would be my comment. Thanks for sharing that. Um, it's a good comment and you know, we would ask the chief to, to make the best decisions he can to maximize the coverage based on all the facilities that he has and use them and his personnel as wisely as he possibly can. Oh yeah, of course. Chief, can I ask that when we were here, uh, was it last fall, but when, whenever it was, the last time we sort of sat around here, January before before the uh, referendums went to uh, went to vote, did you not uh, put on the board there what what the budgets were going to be? Uh, of I believe it was four point something million. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, those were put out there, and I do remember that sitting across the way were was the city of Delafield saying, not a word, but yes, we're gonna pass this referendum and we're gonna get funding. Now that's my recollection of it. And I wanna know what changed. And also you made a comment regarding value of house, housing valuations. So are you telling me that housing valuations are being considered in your, I mean, you're just a flat, flat fee, right? No, I that's, what you, that's what you pass, correct? Or, or is it is it valued that Equalized the million value. is it equalized <clears throat> or is it if if I'm in a, if I'm in a fifty thousand dollar house versus a million dollar house I'm paying more is is that fee change? No, the same. It's the same. Yeah. Then why are you talking about equalization uh, and bringing this up? I think when they talked about that they were talking about the existing funding formula. That's a component of it. Um, to answer one of the first things you said about recollection of last last year, we were sitting over there, and the exact um, scenario that played out is one of the questions that I had for the chief, and that was how realistic were the expectations that he was going to have seven fully tenured, 90% married with kids firefighters starting on January 1st, 2023, because that's the budget number we were looking at. So that, that number that was being presented was called into question at that time um, as being on the high end. And so how that was actually gonna realize itself over the course of the year during the execution was to yet to be determined. Um, and there was other things that that uh, Alderman um, Grimmer mentioned about um, other items in the budget that you mentioned other facets that we brought into question as well. But I don't know if they were just gonna um, there was There was, talk and critique of the budget uh, by the city of Bellfield and our participants last year. But we were not sitting there silent, um, nodding our heads, saying no problem. So I have any objection to your proposal about agreeing to look at this for sometime in 25. Um, does that change your stance? You're hearing objections that change your stance on the IMA amendments that's in front of us. We have we want the caveat that we agree to independent third party review of all aspects of the formula to be part of that motion. Um, sure. Um, nobody's objected to that. Um, I, I mean, but I think good, I think good faith would be shown though if they pass the IMA and they figure out how to you know get twenty four figured out. So they're not we're not all sitting here staring at each other. I mean, this is just our goal is to do both at one time. There, there's a short game and there's an end game, and, and ultimately the short game is. In order to even approve a four point one million dollar budget, we got to approve this IMA. Yeah, we can't even approve it. And, 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 and you guys have been holding this hostage, and it's getting a little ridiculous. With and the then, and then we got to figure out amend the IMA. We just want to add the wording, also voting everybody voting affirmatively to also include this third party uh, analysis. But if we if, if we do that, and then we'll vote on the budget number. The other communities are deciding to change the formula this year. Because, no, 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 go ahead. I mean, I mean, because we're not we we've chosen not to fund the 
its budget. And so either we suffer the consequences of that, whatever exactly they are, we suffer those consequences and or we come up with more money somehow. And that consequently to get to the chief's budget and that changes the formula fundamentally. If we can agree on keeping the formula, approving the budget, even if it's even if it, you know, if if we can keep that and we could another, you know, fifty thousand dollars out of it, fine. But we can't we can't hold everybody hostage over the fact that we we all knew what the idea of the budget was. So to say that we didn't is not true. And we knew what it was. We knew what our figure was. And you're coming in with um, a figure much lower than that. And don't we have the right to do that? I'm not an attorney. <laughs> I think the answer is clearly yes. But, I, I mean, I, I think we should, if we, if we can get away to pass the IMA amendment, then, then we've at least set the baseline that we don't have to lay off firefighters, right? Because we can then get to a, a 3.9 or 4.1, whatever the final number is, budget, right? We would have a pass to get there. Because if in the moment, significant accomplishment. That's that's a big win. Like at the moment, we have no way of keeping the people we just hired. So like if we can bridge that gap, then at least we're retaining the operation as it is. And it, Mr. Chair, I mean, it, it, we could even see a scenario where if we could get the IMA done, we could let the fire board do their work again and, and let them come up with whatever that final number is at their next meeting, um, because then they would have a, an authorized IMA to exceed the CPA plus 2%, and they can figure out that number for 2024, and it's it's not the, the perfect number that the chief asked for, or certainly the number that you're talking about from Minnesota, but it, it prevents us from having layoffs. And I would see that as some sort of a marginal victory where we can path forward and let the fire board continue to work. Does, does anybody disagree with that? I think we're past how, this point. How do you uh, work that with the referendum that you passed, indicating to your constituents that you were going to do a seven and seven fire? Yeah, I mean, we agreed to retain seven and then we agreed to hire seven. Right. And, uh, so, how do you pay? My, Less than that. My my quick answer, Mike, is that we wouldn't have to charge them the full amount of their referendum, right? We had an up to amount. So right. if the number comes in somewhere other than that, then we've accomplished part of the referendum without using the whole dollar amount. But isn't that doesn't that violate your, the public trust? I, the public trust is not laying off here. So that's where I'm at. I, I agree, but the public trust also is hiring more. Yeah, and I think I think it and sounds like we're setting a path forward to 2025 where we would be able to accomplish that in some way. I, I, frankly, I mean, the city of Delafield, aside from the formula thing, I would imagine some of their position is that there's a dollar amount in their referendum. And if the dollar amount on that referendum is different than the dollar amount that residents receive on their tax bill, that would be a big problem for you all. Like, however you got there, is is been debated for a very long time, but I don't see them putting a higher number on the tax bill just because that's the number that residents voted for. Am I off base on that, guys? Yeah, that would be $450 for us. Now, they also have in the referendum that that number can go up in future years. So um, if that number were to go up in 2025, then we would be making progress towards our goals. Mm -hmm. it, it may not be as quick as everybody wants, but we would set a new baseline and then we would be able to make progress towards the goal. And Mike, to answer your question, uh, you know, if we use, let's say, half or we use three fifths or whatever the number is, the subsequent year, if they increase their fee or if we agree to some type of something, uh, we can use the key levy tax as well. We can increase up to that for the be able to fund for the The town also has a unique position where we do not. Um, budget for we don't borrow for our capital, so that's another consideration that we're just having to, to account as far as the referendum. Well, you know, talking about amendments, adjustments for hiring a professional, everything else, I still think that I'd like to see the four million five hundred and fifty four thousand dollar budget. Okay, that is 
Number one, what you told your constituents with your referendum you were going to support. And number two, that's what every community here, with the exception of the city of Delafield, is willing to support. Yes, so that's correct. That, and so if, if I think if we're willing to support X and city of Delafield wants us to support Y, that's how you come together. We want what we want, they want what they want. We'll agree to what they want if they agree to what we want. I think that's just simple. And it also, it fulfills what you promised in your referendum to your constituents, you were going to do. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm with you, Mike. And that's a fine position to take. It's just not a position that has us leaving this room with a 2024 budget. So I, I don't know well, that, you how know, much longer we want. Would you, be each other. Okay, would you agree to what I just said? What community here wouldn't agree except the city of Delphi? Uh, your question of the city is is what? That you want them to pay the full 4.5 to hire some? I want to use the 4.554, which is what was known for a long time. Was it's actually less than what was anticipated. Okay. And I'm saying then we take we bring in the professional, we open the IMA, we have a six-month time frame to get that. That work done so that with all the heavy lifting we have to be committed to by all the communities we can't drag it out and then not agree to anything because we'll again be in a position of hurting the fire department i would like to put that to a motion for the group i'd second it what exactly is that motion yeah there's, there's no I, Harry, i'm sorry you can't do that yeah, as it's, much as I don't disagree with you, unfortunately, <laughs> each municipality each, each municipality has to do, to do the motion on their own. Yeah, well, well, give the city of Delafield five minutes to go into closed session and agree to the full amount of the budget, and we'll all agree to looking at a new formula for twenty five. Isn't that pretty simple? You wasted an hour of our time in closed session already. Take five more minutes and agree to this, or even open session. According to the IMA, we now have the chief's budget in front of us because the fire board did not pass the budget as they were uh, expected to do because the vote didn't pass. So now we have to make a decision. We go with the chief's budget. If we don't go with the chief's budget, very possibly we lose seven people and we don't hire any extra commits here. We're not here uh, to argue, really, to argue about, about anything but how we're going to support our fire department. And these people work hard for us all year. And you dial 911, you expect them to show up. And this is a terrible show um, by the city of Delafield as to their support for the fire department. You all should be ashamed of yourself. I'm sorry. But there are six communities that are supporting our fire department. And for what they do for us all year round, we love these people. And what is this going to show to the to every community in this county <laughs> if you cannot vote for a budget to keep the people you have and to hire some more for next year? So that when you call somebody on in your home needs a, a firefighter, an EMT, a paramedic to show up, <clears throat> you want them to show up. But you're going to sit here and you're going to argue about this budget. Y'all should, I, I just can't even believe it. As far as I'm concerned, our, every community here except Delafield accepts this $4.5 million budget. And my community, my board is ready to vote for it. As a matter of fact, all six communities have except you. Now, if you want to be the standout and you want to show that you do not support the fire department, that is up to you. But I think this meeting should be over. Chair, would you support the fire department? Then show well, it with no, your vote. No, just show no, it. I'm Hold the vote here. here. I'm done with it. Why can't we? Is the city of Delfield willing to go into closed session to consider paying the amount shown in the budget now and then propose for the rest of us to agree to restudying the formula after 24? Are you willing to do that? Otherwise, we might as well go home. Mm -hmm. Are you willing to go into closed session to consider the amount shown in the budget yes, well, well, and then agree to restudying the formula for the future? Are you willing to go into closed session to do that? We're Five here, minutes. We're yes here, or no? We're here to have a discussion. Yeah, we're we're a discussion. 
We're here. We're you here. The it's up to you. So now it's your decision. If you're willing to go with that. It's your decision. I think you heard that we support your idea of opening the IMA. Okay. We don't know why, but we're supporting it. But we're supporting it. And we're also, I'm trying to put a finite amount of time on it so that we all have an answer for 23. And I'm saying you give us 24 budget that the chief submitted. We'll support your idea of hiring a professional and bringing them in to look at the IMA in earnest. And we'll all commit to working hard to get it done by the end of March. And we'll start right away as soon as we can hire that professional. And I, I think that that's ultimately what your goal was, was to get the IMA opened up. Our goal, the six other communities that are supporting the fire department, their goal is to follow the plan that was voted on last year. Okay, and it was reiterated and voted on again by the fire board this year. It's in the minutes of the meeting from July, I believe, if I'm correct, Chief. Is that right? Jim, we're not June. we're not going anywhere. And we get the city of Delfield to at least consider we, we, we have the a, budget number for this year. We we've yeah. had that discussion. We have it again. And, and we've been sitting here for a number of almost an hour. I haven't watched the clock, having this discussion about how we're trying to find a compromise that we can find agreement on. It is and a compromise. And that's one that, we, that doesn't meet our criteria. It is a compromise. We're asking for you to agree to the budget for this year, and the compromise is we're agreeing to study the formula going forward. That is a compromise. Why don't you consider it in closed session? Please. And we talked about that before. I, I believe you've got every community here right where you belong, more or less. Okay? Opening up the IMA. Fully open opening up the IMA. The only ask, the only thing we ask is that we support the chief and the fire department. And any other vote that doesn't support the chief and the fire department, I think we're all wasting our time here. Because there's six communities that want to do that and are prepared to do that. And there's one that isn't. And the one that isn't, their main goal is to open the IMA. And you've got the other six to agree. You got what you came for. They refuse to open up I mean, it's, 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 it's not happening tonight. That is not happening. We're on the front way to open it up tonight. We, we can't open it up until 25 or beyond. Yes. I mean, the town went to referendum under the rules that were laid out in the IMA in 2020 that everybody agreed to. And you guys, when you guys went to referendum, changed the rules. You threw out that fixed portion. That was, you know, th that was derelict in duty. And that was irresponsible well, I, by I'm, the way that you did that. That's being brought up. I'm curious where you get that, where you get that from. Get what going up fixed portion. Could we go back and watch the YouTube meeting from January when you, Tom laid out the different scenarios to go to the um referendum? The, the one had, formula had, was to throw out five. the higher fixed portion and go with 100 the equalized value population and calls. We had five different scenarios and the discussion. <laughs> the dis <laughs> we, had, we had eight to be. I, I mean, you can look at you go back and look, you're telling me to look at the meeting. You can go look at the meetings. And the discussion okay. was how much money above and beyond the taxing that's already being done. Do we think, in light of what went on in Western Lakes the year before, how horribly that failed, we pushed the envelope to as much money as we thought we could get passed from our constituents. And it passed. And and that's where we that's that's where our, what our number is. We have a not to exceed so budget number that's on the table. So you bring up the fear of what happened at Western Lakes. Is that is that your reason for the stalemate? I'm not, I wasn't afraid of. We're not afraid of. What, I'm saying that was a real life scenario about how the public reacted to a uh, ask for more money above and beyond what they had been asked for before, and we did something pragmatic as far as what we felt was our highest chances of getting as much from our tax base as we could. The other okay, so it, what exactly is your 100% <clears throat> pushback on this? Is it the IMA? Is it the percentage? Tell me, give me one fact that is your pushback.
Jerry, we, we've explained what our proposal is. We are willing to give all the money that our citizens approved in the referendum. And you know what, Ken? The they're they're the handing you, the other six sure communities are happen. handing you a, a golden popsicle, and you guys aren't taking it. So they've offered to open up the IMA. All they want to do is fund this through 24, which I think is completely reasonable. And you guys are pushing back on that. Why? I'll make a motion to go in closed session to discuss this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you in a little bit. Hey, five minutes. You can do it in five minutes, guys. We'll see you there. Yeah. Henry, Schaefer, Valdi, yeah. Wilkins, Trimmer, Price, Iker. Recording stopped. they were out for an hour in closed session and it came back I think so. I'll see. As your Twitter is, I can get the hour. But the question is, how can you develop the old thing? If they're going to do third plugs and he's coming back with you, and these other six players are going to open up a bigger portion of that. Then they do the six plugs white. I heard it was doing a good job. Yeah, 
Forty two box six noodles. He Recording in progress. Okay, we'll uh, reconvene the meeting. As you might notice, some of the communities have adjourned in the part of the Can you speak up? It's hard to hear you all the way down here. Okay, I said, we'll reconvene the meeting, and as you can see, a couple of the communities have re 
recess or adjourned, I mean, and left. So we'll listen to further discussion then from the city and the ones that are left here. Okay. So we went into closed session, we had a discussion, and we want to continue down the lines of negotiation where we thought we had a, uh, a realistically very close agreement um, between the town of Delafield uh, spokesperson and ourselves. So we want to work down that path, and we're not interested in working down the path that was uh, proposed by Mr. Bickler. Give me your path and dollars. So yeah, that would be a... Um... LCFR budget of $3.857 million plus any cost savings um, from the 2023 hiring. No, I want what you are willing to pay. Uh, $1,591,875. We're operating and then plus capital or no? That's just operating. All right. Let's go change the No. We didn't uh, know, I, but at least, at least it clarifies. We know what's the what they're trying to cheap on. <clears throat> All right, so you're unwilling to go with the numbers that are on the printed sheet, which is the one million eight plus for operations plus capital. You're unwilling to do that. Is that correct? We said what we were willing to do. What and, and that's one million five. That's correct. All right, why don't we go? Ahead. Let's go. Where do we make sense? I'm leaving. Oh, yes. Brown out there stations in hell with them. I'm leaving. Thank you all. I heard the motion to adjourn. I second this. Do I have a motion to adjourn from the fire board? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. Recording stopped. Hey, Matt, what's, what's your pleasure here, Michelle? Fire board. Fire board. Fire board. Are we are we adjourning? Are we adjourning? Or did you want to? No this training is now over. I about that, man. Oh, 